Hello Internet and welcome to the first Somewhere Under the Radar of 2017. It's been a long time, hasn't it? TGP Grey, Link, says that the vlogger cannot call himself a real YouTuber before two things have happened. First, that the person in the comments dislikes him on appearance alone, and the second, that he starts a video with apologizing on how long it's been since the last upload. So my first hate comment is yet to come, but here I am to apologize for how long it's taken me since the last episode of Somewhere Under the Radar. I've written a script for this episode something like six months ago, but it's gotten so out of date it's scary. You see, the song accompanying this episode is a love song written from the point of view of an AI, and I've written this whole diatribe on how badly the future AI is being badmouthed today by people like John Searle, Link, claiming that machines could never have a mind of their own, and how this kind of dehumanization can cause all sorts of atrocities against general AI, even when it does actually show up, but I can't perform it. You know why? Well, Trump happened. And believe me, I don't live in the US, but living in Germany is, doesn't make it any less scary, especially if you consider the Russian front. From the moment that personified dehumanization got elected, talking about what could happen to some creature that may show up in the future and nobody's 100% certain ever will seem childish when so many people are so afraid that the same forces are going to be used against them. So I couldn't do that script. But there is something we can take from philosophers like John Searle that claim that machines could never have a mind of their own and experience things from their point of view. And that is that you can never prove that a machine has any of these, for sure. If a machine comes to you and says that it's sentient and conscious and has experiences, you could just say, well, it might have been programmed to say these things, right? But this kind of logic can also be applied to humans as well. You can always say that some person doesn't actually feel anything, that he's just an automaton or an animal and doesn't deserve the respect that really humans, human beings deserve. And that opens a crack through which all sorts of dehumanization and atrocities can filter through. So how does one counter that? How does one prove the unprovable? How does one show that he exists? From a logical point of view, the task is impossible. But from a, an emotional, a fragile, a human point of view, there are several ways to do that. And they all revolve about exposing yourself and showing the world, showing the other side, what it means to be you, what makes you, you. A few days ago, I saw a video on YouTube that showed a young Muslim artist standing blindfolded in front of Capitol Hill, I think, and he held a sign that said that since people think that because he's Muslim he's a terrorist and they fear him, but he decided to open up the trust and let people trust him, so stands there, totally exposed, totally vulnerable, and he asks them to give him a hug, and they do. I was very touched by that thing, and when I prepared this video I, I went looking for it and I couldn't find it, but instead I, find, I found tons of other clips, virtually identical from all over the world, from London, from Paris, from Moscow. And this strategy works because when you turn somebody's prejudice on its head, it brings it to the foreground and forces them to think consciously about their prejudices, and that brings an opportunity to change their minds. Let me tell you a story. When I grew up, being nerdy was my fault, and I had my share of humiliation and beatings. But I want to tell you about the day I felt that changed. I did my military service in the Israeli army, and before you say anything, yes, I know that was an awful decision, and I regret it every single day, but when I served in the Israeli army, I did so in the capacity of a communications technician, and one of the pieces of equipment we had to uh, lug around from place to place was a 50 kilo box of iron called a multiplexer. You'd connect a lot of uh, uh, phone lines and radio lines from one side and it would mix them all together or 
mix them all together and send it by radio to the other side in such a way that it could be then unmixed or demixed on the other side. When I left the army, I immediately went to uh, university to learn electrical engineering and being the nerdy man I am, I didn't make a lot of friends uh, at first. And by the second uh, semester of the first year, I actually, I didn't really know anybody. And uh, one day the teacher in digital systems class drew this on the board and asked us if anybody knows what that is. She called it a multiplexer, and of course I knew what it was, so again, being me, an insufferable know it all, I immediately raised my hand and asked the question, and I was the only one in the class who knew what that was, and I didn't feel at first the whole class turned against me, but they did, and the moment the class ended, they started pointing and laughing and calling names, and one of the names they used was Mux, and it wasn't used affectionately, it was... At one point, one of the guys came, actually came to me and asked me to my face, do you, do you mind if I call you Mux? And I was like, yeah, sure. And there are not a lot of moments in life where you feel your life change, but that was some, such a moment for me, because the moment I owned that nickname, and the moment I took pride in what and who I was, was the first time I actually felt pride in being a human. And the guy, I think, was a little bit shocked by what I did, and later he came to uh, to tell me that he was really ashamed of how he treated me back then but we eventually became pretty good friends especially when he needed help uh, getting ready for exam what i'm trying to say is that this whole thing would not have happened if it wasn't for me flipping his expectations because he expected me to be meek and fearful and close up and run away but i did not I stood up to him and I, I was brave at that moment and that was the moment I changed his view of me. So here is my principle for fighting prejudice, I guess. Whenever you behave in a way that doesn't fit with the way people see you, you get an opportunity to change their minds. If they think you are scared, be brave. If you think you are fanatic, be moderate. If they think you are violent, be peaceful. What do you think? Leave a comment criticizing my look so I can consider myself a real blogger. One final note. Good riddance 2016.